giving us an understanding the son of god has come the moment you repent of your sin and the moment you believe on the lord he has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even in his son jesus christ listen to this this is the true god and uh, eternal life this is the true god and eternal life we're coming back to john chapter 17 john chapter 17 you see the prayer of the lord jesus christ what he was telling the father and he told he told the father i'm reading now from john chapter 17 and i'm reading from verse 5 john chapter 17 verse 5 it says and now O father glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which i had with thee tell me the rest before the world was he said i had glory with you i had glory with you before the world began before the world began we're looking at some 90 and i'm reading from verse 2 some 90 verse 2 when it says before the world began so that you will understand that jesus christ is everlasting jesus christ is eternal it's not that jesus just came he had been in heaven from all eternity we're looking at some 90 and i'm reading from verse 2 it says before the mountains were brought forth or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God so when he said I'll be with you and glory with you I have honor with you I have majesty with you before the world was that means from all eternity we're coming to John chapter 17 John chapter 17 and I'm reading from verse 24 John chapter 17 I'm reading from verse 24 it says in verse 24 father a will that those that they uh, also whom thou hast given me may be with me where I am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou hast loved me tell me before the foundation of the world and so you know that Jesus Christ was not created he's been there from all eternity before the foundation of the world and now that was going back to the father and going back to heaven it was asking the father glorify me with the glory that i had with you before the world began so that i can resume that glory again as i go back to heaven that's part of the prayer we're coming back to uh, john chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 6 now point number two the proof of the salvation of his followers the proof of the salvation of his followers there are many people that you know uh, sometimes they are asking the question those disciples of christ that are following christ were they actually born again were they saved did they have their names in heaven did they have the same salvation we have now because jesus christ had not got to calvary yet could anybody be saved could anybody be born again and there are some people that will say no they were not born again they didn't know jesus christ as savior only after he died and went to the cross and that's the time they knew the lord as savior let's see what the lord jesus christ himself is saying concerning them the proof of their salvation those followers of christ those disciples of christ those people that left everything and they turned their back on the world and they trusted in christ relied on christ believed in christ and accepted christ and they fully gave them that you give me the 
they were children of God and it says they have kept your word it says in verse 7 now they have known that all things whatsoever that was given me are of thee they have known that everything that uh, is of thee you have given unto me they were different from the pharisees they were different from the sadducees they were different from the people of the world look at verse 8 for i have given unto them the words that thou gavest me and they have received them you see that uh, the lord jesus christ gave the word unto them they didn't reject the word they didn't turn away from the word they received the word of god it says they have received them and they have known they have known surely that i came out from thee and they have believed that thou did send me they have believed these were believers not unbelievers look at verse 9 i pray for them i pray not for the world that already distinguishes them differentiates them and made them different from the people of the world i pray for them i pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine they are thine they are your sons and daughters you have given them unto me and it says in verse 10 and all mine are thine and thine are mine and i am glorified in them what is saved were they born again? Did they belong to God? Of course they did. We're looking at John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I read from verse 27. John chapter 10, verse 27. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You see all those people who left darkness behind they left their sins behind. They left all their, even their trade, they left everything behind. And they followed Jesus Christ unreservedly. He said, they are my sheep. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. And he says, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. They were saved. They had eternal life. He says, I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And then he says, my father, which gave them me, my father has given them to me, they belong to me, is greater than all. And then he says uh, over here in this uh, verse 29, uh, and he says, no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. They belong to the Lord. Look at John chapter 15. The proof of the salvation of these followers of Christ. These were not sinners anymore, not even backsliders. These were people that Christ had chosen out of the world. And they belonged to the Lord, completely to the Lord. Look at chapter 15, verse 19. It says, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. He was saying, you are not of the world, because if you were of the world, the world would love its own. And then he goes on to say, but because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Did they belong to the world? Did they belong to Christ? Yes. Were they saved? Yes. Were they born again? It says, I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world he tells you. Uh, we're coming to John chapter 15 verse 3. Chapter 15 verse 3 telling us that these ones, they have been converted. These ones, their lives have turned around. These ones, their lives have changed. And it says in chapter 15 verse 3, it says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. The Lord cleansed them. The Lord washed them. The Lord purged them, and the Lord transformed their lives. And he says, now ye are clean. Now ye are clean through the word which has spoken unto you. We're reading from chapter 17 and verse 14. Chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 14. It tells us in verse 14, it says, I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because... Because, because of what? 
They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. They are not of the world. That means they were born again already. That means they were new creatures already. That means they belong to Christ, to the kingdom of God already. Look at verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Keep them, protect them from the evil. And keep them away from evil so that they will not be of the world. Look at, look at verse 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Obviously, they were born again. Obviously, they were real children of God. Come to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 20. Luke chapter 10. We're reading from verse 20. In Luke chapter 10, verse 20, here is, you know, here is proof that these ones, fathers of Christ, disciples of Christ, they were really and truly born again. It says, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. Then he says, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Written the book of life in heaven. If somebody is not saved, can his name be in the book of life in heaven? No. These people were saved. They were children of God. They had real salvation. The kind of salvation you have, the kind of salvation we have today, that's the kind of salvation they had because they accepted the word of God. They received the word of God and that word of God worked in their lives. And today, whosoever will receive, whosoever will accept the word of God that Jesus Christ is Savior and Jesus is the only Savior, that person will be saved saved and then his life will be turned around we're looking at uh, first thessalonians chapter 2 first thessalonians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 13 in first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 it says for this cause also thank we god without ceasing because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. The word of God that you receive as you turn away from your sin and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It says that word works effectually, works mightily, and works effectively in everyone that believes. And those people, they believe the word of God. And the word of God works in them. And the word of God transformed and changed their lives. The same way it is changing lives today. And I pray that your neighbors will see that you have received the word of God and your life has totally changed look at first John chapter 4 first John chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 14 first John chapter 4 we're reading from verse 14 it says and we have seen and do testify that the father has sent the son to be the savior of the world was seen it we've heard of it We've read it, and we do believe, and we testify, and we proclaim that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever, whosoever, there's no discrimination. As you see that Jesus Christ has died on the cross of Calvary, and say, he died for me, that's for me, he died. That's for me, he shed his blood. That's for me, he paid the price of uh, the glorious salvation. And it's for whosoever, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God. God dwells in him and he in God. And we have known and believed. We have known and believed. Thank God I know. Thank God I believe. We have known and we have believed the love that God has said to us that God is love. And that he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 25. In Hebrews chapter 7. Reading from verse 25. Hebrews 7. Verse 25, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost. Whosoever you are is able to save. 
However far you've gone in sin, is able to save. However the cord and the habit of sin has tied you up, is able to save. Because he is Christ, because he is Savior, because he is Redeemer, and he has paid the price of that salvation for everyone. That's why it says, wherefore, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He ever live it to make intercession for them. You remember what I read to you already in John chapter 17, verse 9, uh, that I pray for them, I pray not for the world. He's making intercession for us. For everyone that believes of the Lord Jesus Christ, is making that intercession and is making that prayer. And because of that prayer, as you key into that prayer, as you accept that prayer, as you believe that that is for me, Christ that for me, and Christ is praying for me it will save you and then after you are saved it will keep you in that salvation for such an high priest became us who is holy and harmless undefiled separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens is praying for you look at chapter 9 of hebrews hebrews chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 24 hebrews chapter 9 reading from verse 24 it says for christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of god for us to appear in the presence of God for us it's not the presence of God and he appears for you he appears for everyone that believes on him and as you believe you are going to see that manifestation of faith in Christ that your life will totally turn around in Jesus name the proof of the salvation of his followers they were saved and if you're a follower today salvation comes to you you abandon your sin and you embrace the Savior, salvation comes to you. And you keep on walking with the Lord and you will not turn back away from him. Salvation will be yours in Jesus' name. Whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And when it says whosoever, that means any part of the world, to the uttermost part of the earth, as you call on the name of the Lord, salvation, conversion, transformation, a new life, eternal life will come unto you. And then your neighbors will see it's a new man, it's a new woman. Things are different now. All things have passed away and all things have become new. If if it has not happened, it's going to happen. Yeah. To you, it will happen. Yeah. If it has happened already, there will be a greater assurance, a deeper assurance in your heart. I belong to Christ. I said, I belong to Christ. I said, I belong to Christ. And my neighbors will see. And all my friends will see. And then the power of the people that belong to Christ, the power... through the Son by the Father, our to know the Lord. Point number three, our protection through the Son by the Father. We're looking at John chapter 17 and I'm reading from verse 11. John chapter 17 verse 11. It says and now I am no more in the world but these are in the world and I come unto thee. Holy Father, Holy Father, righteous Father, keep through thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. It says, keep them, protect them, preserve them so that they will not fall. Preserve them so that they will not sin. Look at verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them 
in thy name. While I was with them, present with them, I kept them in thy name. Now I am coming to you. I'm no more going to be with them physically. That's why I'm praying to you that you will keep them. It says, those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. The Father has given you to the Son. The Father has given you to the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you abide in him, you will not be lost. As you consecrate more to him, you will not be lost. As God gives you the grace to resist temptation, you will not be lost in Jesus' name. He said, those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition. Nobody there will be a daughter of perdition. You'll not be a son of perdition. That the scriptures might be fulfilled. Number one here we see preservation from sin and defilement. Preservation from sin and defilement. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I kept them, I kept them while I was with them. I kept them from sin. I kept them from defilement. I'm looking at Psalm 19. In Psalm 19, I'm reading from verse 13. He is the one that can keep us. Temptation will come, he'll keep us. Trials will come, he'll keep us. And all the pollutions of the world try to come into our lives, it will keep you in Jesus' name. We're looking at uh, Psalm 19, and I'm reading from verse 13. Psalm 19, verse 13, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Keep back thy servant. Keep back the follower of Christ. Keep back the child of God. Keep back those who believe in you. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Let them not have dominion over me. That's the prayer you're praying. You're saying, I know you can keep me. I know you can secure me. I know you can protect me. I know you can so keep me that the sins of the world, defilement of the world, will not touch my life. And you keep me so that they will not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright. And I shall be innocent from the great, from that great transgression. I look at Psalm 119, Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 9. Psalm 119, reading from verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? It says, by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Ah, we preserve from sin. Temptation comes and say no. Trials come and say, I'm not going to fall. And all those defiling things in the world, they come against your life. You say, Jesus is by my side. And Jesus is living within me. And he's going to keep me. And you remember the word of God. He says, with my whole heart, have I sought thee? Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You you will not sin. Amen. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against the Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, we come to the Lord, we become dead to sin. We come to the Lord and we're totally separated from sin. We come to the Lord and there's a change of life. There's a transformation. And that transformation makes us righteous. And then we are kept away from sinning. It tells us Romans chapter 6 and verse 7. It says, for he that is dead is free from sin. Free from sin. Free from sin. Anybody there free from sin? The Lord will make you free. The Lord will keep you free. Uh, you have testimonies of freedom in Jesus' name. And uh, look, at, look at verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Reckon yourself. Accept it in yourself. Believe it for yourself. Know that because you are saved, because you are a child of God, you are dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. It says in verse 12, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. If it comes, you stand and say, Where are you coming? What are you doing? This one, this is the temple of God. Sin cannot enter here anymore. I said, sin will not enter here anymore. 
uh, you will not be saying temptation has come again. Uh, they want to pull me down. They want to draw me down. They want me to fall. Uh, uh, that's a conqueror does not talk like that because now you are more than a conqueror. And when it comes to say no, because that heaven, you're going to get there in Jesus' name. That's why it says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey each and the lusts thereof. And then he tells us in verse 18, look at verse 18, it says, being then made free from sin. Somebody there, are you free from sin? Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Look at verse 22. It says, but now, now, at this very time, but now, be made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Number one, preservation from sin and defilement. Number two protection by our savior and deliverer protection by our savior and deliverer jesus is our savior jesus is our deliverer and he'll protect you from every evil i said he'll protect you from every evil evil spirit under your feet satanic attack under your feet yeah. and look at what you say look at what you said in john chapter 17 verse 11 and now i am no more in the world but these are in the world and i come unto thee holy father holy father keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are while i was with them while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, it says, I have kept them. I have kept and none of them is lost. You will not be lost to the devil. He will not get you again. He will not possess you again. He will not, you will not be his property anymore. And look at Psalm 91, Psalm 91, I, I, I should have read from verse 3, but let me read, let me back up to verse 1, because the whole thing is good. It's talking about the believer, the one that dwells in the Lord, the one that dwells under the shadow of the Almighty. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Satan cannot catch you there. Evil spirit cannot catch you there. Powers of darkness cannot catch you there. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In Him will I trust. Surely, somebody shall surely. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me. He shall cover me with his feathers under his wings shall I trust I, is the truth I shall be my shield and my buckler thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flies by day nor for the pestilence that wasted in darkness or not for the, uh, the, the destruction uh, that wasted at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Let me read that again. A thousand shall fall by my side. Ah, say it for yourself. And 10,000 by my right hand, but it shall not come near me. It shall not come near me. You are more than a conqueror. Yeah. You are an overcomer. Yeah. And the power of the Lord will keep you. Yeah. He'll keep you from Satan. Yeah. Keep you from evil spirit. Yeah. Keep from, from evil power. Yeah. 
and then it says only when thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou hast made the Lord which is uh, my refuge uh, even the most high thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any play come near thy dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee to keep who i said to keep who to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone it says thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder the young lion and the dragon shall not trample on the foot because he has set his love upon me therefore will i deliver him he is our savior he is our deliverer and he protects the people he has saved and he keeps on delivering us i will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me somebody tonight will call upon him he shall call upon me who is that you call upon the lord he'll answer your prayer tonight he shall call upon me and i will answer him i will be with him in trouble and i will deliver him i will honor him with long life will i satisfy him and show him my salvation and show him my salvation is he talking about you there yeah. psalm 121 psalm 121 i'm reading here from verse 3 in psalm 121 reading from verse 3 he will not suffer thy foot to be moved yeah. he that keepeth thee will not slumber Behold, he that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. How many kinds of evil? Who is going to be protected? Who is going to be kept? The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. You're protected. I'm protected. I said I'm protected. And the Lord will preserve you in Jesus' name. Let's come back to John. We're looking at John chapter 17. Number one, preservation from sin and defilement. Number two, protection by our Savior and deliverer. Number three, prevention of eternal suffering and damnation. You will not perish prevention of eternal suffering and damnation we're looking at verse 12 john chapter 17 we're looking at verse 12 it says when i was with them in the world i kept them in thy name those that thou gavest me i have kept and none of them is lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled negative prophecy will not be fulfilled in your life you see Judas is carried out he didn't remain he didn't abide and now he's suffering and his damnation but Jesus said all the others that are willing to abide all the people here that are willing to abide willing to abide I said willing to abide and willing to remain then he protects, he prevents eternal suffering and 
damnation. Look at John chapter 5. John chapter 5. And you see, there's damnation at the end of the life of sinning. But for those who believe on the Lord, who abide in the Lord, who continue with the Lord, who remain in the Lord, who claim their victory, who enjoy their victory, who testify of their victory, and who abide in their victory, you will not be lost in Jesus' name. It says in chapter 5 and verse 28, it says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. And then it says, In the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. That's where I belong. They that have done good. They that have the grace of God, they whose lives have been totally transformed, and those who abide in the Lord. It says they'll come to the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. That's where Judas Iscariot went. I will not follow Judas Iscariot. First Peter, first Peter. I'm reading from chapter 1, verse 3. First Peter chapter 1. We're reading from verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible. And undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Who are kept, look at that, who are kept, he will keep you. Who are kept by the power of God, through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. It will be revealed to you. You possess it in Jesus' name. Jude, I'm reading from verse 20, Jude chapter 1, only one chapter, and we're reading here from verse 20. But she beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy face, praying in the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? It means a lot of things. When you're praying by yourself, and inspiration comes, and you pray, and the prayer is flowing, and it's like you never prayed like this before. And the Holy Ghost has taken over. Don't look at him and say, okay, I'm running out of time. I'm going pray. When the Holy Ghost is interceding, making you to pray. Another time, you're in a congregation like this. Like tonight, we're going to pray. Are you going to pray tonight? Because there's preservation tonight. There's protection tonight. There's power flowing here tonight. And when we're praying, that one is praying, that one is praying, that one is praying. And the Holy Ghost is teaching us as a church. And we're praying. And every foundation of every evil sin is going to be shaken out of your life. And the weak is going to become strong. And those who are slow, they're going to become fast. And then everything that is a lukewarmness in your life is being taken away. And we have the spirit of prayer. That's not the time to say, well, I don't know whether I'm going to continue or not. When that spirit is moving us to pray, you will pray. Yeah. And then when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, oh, Holy Ghost takes over your life and he leads you in prayer. It might be in your house, it might be in the church, it might be in the congregation. When that Holy Ghost has come and is building your praying in the Holy Ghost, you will not restrict and you will not stop, you will pray. Look at that verse 20 again. It says, But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Look at this, keep yourselves. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, unto, say it out aloud, until eternal life. Now, in verse 24, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Praise the Lord, the power of God is here tonight. Praise the Lord, the Holy Ghost is here tonight. 
and praise the Lord, Calvary is going to be mightily manifested in your life tonight in Jesus' name. All that falling and rising, falling and rising tonight is going to stop. Weakness, that's going to stop. Yielding to temptation, that's going to stop. Because now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. He wants us to pray. And he wants us to pray so that the power of God will move in our lives. The power of God will energize you. And then all the weakness, everything will be totally taken away. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 20. He says, now unto him that is able, able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. You want victory and you're asking that tonight, it will happen. You want overcoming power and you're asking for that tonight, it will happen. And you want strength to stand and to be able to overcome every challenge that the world or the devil is bringing your way, it will happen tonight. Because it says, now unto him that is able, able to deal exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek according to the power that worketh in us. According to the power that worketh where? According to the power that walketh where? In us. Then it says unto him, be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. He gives us power. He gives us understanding. And he gives us assurance that as we ask him, and you want to be strong in the inner man, you want to be filled with the fullness of God, it's available tonight. And because he's there to keep you, and you're relying upon him to keep you, he will keep you in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 28. It says, For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And then it says, Now and now and now, God, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all, tell me, boldness they may speak thy word as we are going forth you live victoriously you live triumphantly and you'll conquer every challenge in jesus name by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child jesus and when they had prayed like we're going to pray and when they had prayed i say like we're going to pray the place was shaking where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they speak the word of God with boldness and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own but they had all things common you have the same power that I have, the same authority I have, all things common, the same confidence I have, the same name of Jesus I have, the same promise of the word of God that I have, and the same victory. We're going to have the victory together in Jesus' name. And then in verse 33, and with great power, with great power, with great power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace over there great grace over there 
grace, grace over there, and great grace was upon them all. Tonight, there's sufficient grace for everyone. The sufficient skill for everyone, sufficient ability for everyone, sufficient enablement for everyone. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be strengthened. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, answer is coming from heaven tonight in Jesus' name. Jesus prayed and said that the Son will be glorified. And Jesus prayed that God will keep the people that the Father has given him. And I was talking about you. I said he was talking about you. I said he was talking about you. And the Lord is going to answer your prayer tonight. Let weakness turn to strength tonight. Will it happen? Let defeat turn to victory tonight. Will it happen? Stand up and make it happen. Stand up and you tell the Lord tonight, tonight is the night of praying. It's the night of praying for victory. Christ has promised us already. And Christ has given this to us already. And we're telling the Lord, oh Lord, here am I tonight. Here am I tonight. Be glorified in me. Let the Son be glorified in me. Let Jesus be glorified in me. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord tonight. Tell the Lord tonight that Christ will be glorified in your life sinning will come to an end weakness will come to an end falling and rising will come to an end because christ wants to be glorified in your life christ wants to be glorified in your life sin does not glorify god yielding to temptation does not glorify God remaining weak like you have ever been does not glorify God living like the people of the world does not glorify God oh Lord be glorified in me tonight be glorified in me tonight be glorified in me tonight let him do it let him do it make today the day of a new level a higher level of victory in your life victory over sin victory over sickness victory over satanic attack when you are alone by yourself you are victorious when you are in the church you are victorious when you are in the family you are victorious your mindset has changed your heart has changed your character has changed your outlook has changed everything about you has changed and you are very different from all the people around you in the world. Different. Distinguished. Never to be like them again. Get the victory tonight. And go with a permanent victory. Be a conqueror tonight. And be more than a conqueror. Be an overcomer tonight. And everywhere you go, demonstrate the power that overcomes. Overcoming the world, overcoming the flesh, overcoming habitual sinning. You will not be like the worldly people anymore. You will not be like the sinners in the world anymore. Different. Even the unbelievers will know something has happened to you. You are saved, you are righteous. You are saved, you are delivered. You are saved, you are more than a conqueror. Seal the victory. That Satan cannot take you out of the victory anymore. Seal it up. By the blood of the Lamb, seal it up. By the covenant of promise, seal it up. By the pouring of the Spirit upon your life, seal it up. By the confidence you have in Christ and in Calvary, seal it up. And close the back door that's always leading you away from the Lord, leading you away from victory. Close that door, close that door, close that door so that your victory is permanent your conquering is permanent lord gives you now a new strength a new energy a new consecration a new devotion a new power 
a new authority conquering spirit conquering spirit he will never leave you he'll never forsake you abide in him stay with him live in victory live in dominion let the weakness of the past return to strength let the grace of god multiply in your life grace to be victorious grace to live in victory in the private in the public victory in church at home victory by yourself and with other people victory let the lord single you out to be like a daniel single you out to be like a shadrach meshach and abednego that will not bend to nebuchadnezzar that will not yield to pharaoh let the lord make you strong strong in your soul strong in your spirit strong in your backbone victorious victorious conquering strengthened you're empowered you're energized and you know you're going out of the bible study tonight with a new strength with a new power with a new consecration with a new determination that the things that defeated you before that will happen no more that happens no more In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Victorious children of God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Conquering children of God, I said, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are going home with victory. Amen. You are going home with power. The power of the spirit that conquers will go with you in Jesus' name. The angels of God will clear the way for you. The spirit of God will go before you. And all those challenges that made you afraid before, all those challenges that made you fall before, from tonight, you're victorious in Jesus' name. Where is the victorious person there? Victorious brother? Victorious sister, where are they? Praise the Lord. I will not be like before. I said I'm no more like before. I said I'm no more like before. Satan will see you and run. Evil powers will see you and run. And those tempters and temptresses that used to come, the fire in your eyes will drive them away. Sickness forever gone. Oppression forever gone. Weakness forever gone. Victory. 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 Father in Jesus' name. 
I thank you for all your people here tonight. I pray, Lord, all those who came in as sinners, make them saved souls right now in Jesus' name. All those who came in with condemnation. Lord, I pray the blood of Jesus will wipe every condemnation away in Jesus' name. Grace for everyone. Forgiveness for everyone. Assurance of salvation for everyone. And the joy of salvation for everyone in Jesus' name. Make everyone real, true followers of Christ in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that you will break the power of sin from everyone in Jesus' name. Any sickness, any infirmity there, Lord, by your power, by your authority and anointing and command that sickness, get out in Jesus' name. All the satanic affliction walking here, walking about in your body, and then they have come again, they have come again, be strong in Jesus' name. And all those serpents and scorpions and all those cockroaches and everything that is of evil, I drive them away from your life in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus cleanses you. The blood of Jesus covers you. The blood of Jesus conquers everything in your life in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray every brother here, every sister here, everyone here, every leader and every worker and every member and every invitee, I pray, Lord, they go out in the strength of the Lord. In the power of the Lord and the victory you have never seen before from tonight, you begin to see that victory. Great will be your victory. Great will be your triumph. Great will be your joy. And he that is able to keep you from falling, go home with you. He that is able to keep you standing, go home with you. And he that abides forever, faithful, faithfully abiding forever, be with you in Jesus' name. And this word that you have heard tonight will keep on working in your heart. Effectually, effectively, mightily, powerfully in your life in Jesus' name. Confirm the victory in every life. And make everyone here tonight, and everyone that is here tonight, make everyone more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. We know it is done. We give you the glory, and we receive the blessing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.